So this is the first shot that I created. Um, I do love this shot. It looks like something out of like a Netflix documentary of like Harry and Meghan Markle or something. <laughs> but I deliberately shot into the corner of the room so that the walls, well windows in this case, act as a leading line towards my face. And then this is the setup. So I've got the Blackmagic 6K Pro with the Canon 16-35mm Mark III. And then these are my settings. I'll put them on screen here. And then I use one light for this. Obviously got the sunlight as well beaming in. So I have to make sure I've got a decently bright light to battle against that. So I've got the small rig RC220D with the 85 centimeter softbox. The light was set to 100% as you can see. Also I use the internal and external diffusion in the softbox and the honeycomb grid so that the light didn't spill all over the whole room and focused mainly just on myself. Um, the only problem with, it, with this is that I needed something else just to make me stand out from the background. As you can see the back of my head it kind of blends into the background and the back of like my shoulders. So I added a small rig 120D set to 10% with the hyper reflector on and just clipped a cheap bit of diffusion on there also just to kind of soften the light up a little bit and then as you will see this is the before shot and then here is the after and as you can see it just creates that little bit of light on the back of my head so it blends so it, it stops me from blending into the background and sort of pops out um, I do wish I wasn't wearing a black jumper, um, I didn't even realise I was going to be filming this and using this footage but it looked that good I thought you know I've got to use it. So if I had a different colour top on it would look a bit more better but yeah this was the first shot so let's go on to the next one. Yeah. Right so let's open this bad boy. <laughs> inside we have a lot of packaging so there it is it's more of 120d got a little hyper reflector here and also the cables there so i'll get this out get it set up and uh yeah i'll show you the one light setup I feel like that looks something a lot more similar to what it was. Obviously we had a dust sheet all over the back of this and that really softened it up. Unfortunately, I don't think we no longer have it. Well, I can't find it anywhere anyway. So we've got the special ting, which is the Haze Aerosol Can Spray. And once this gets lit off, you'll see. I actually think the shot was much tighter and then so the magic happens. Just look what happens to this. Haze aerosol can spray. Now look at the shot. Now look at the shot. Just from a bit of haze. Unbelievable. literally so simple <laughs> my boxing shit <laughs> but as you can see literally we've got the small rig 120d with the hyper reflector on <coughs> geez i'm choking on this thing and yeah that's just and just a bit of haze and it's set to 30 percent that is incredible because the Fennel lens I had was set to 100% and it kicks out so much heat and uses so much electricity and there's like a, I think it's a thousand watts, 100 watts, but yeah that is literally just a simple shot, look and it just creates, you see the, where my head is you can just see the, the, the rays created from that haze and it's settled down a bit now. Well, it's still lasting nicely. And then 
What I think I actually did create once was it's all red. So let me just get a red gel real quick. That's what it looks like without it. So let's just try, try it without it a sec. Sorry about the noise of the gels. Oh my God, they're so loud. So this is it. Just without any gel. Just a nice 5600 Kelvin white. Obviously if I change, change the Kelvin in the camera. So I've actually set this to um, 10,000 Kelvin, as high as the camera can go. It's not as orange as I'd like it to be, but um, this is just so you don't have to use any gels. If you had no gels on you, because it's only one light, it doesn't matter about affecting any other lights because it's only one light scene. If I was to add this CTO now, it should be like ridiculously orange. So there we are, that's now at 10,000 Kelvin. I actually prefer it to be fair. Before it was set to 5,600 Kelvin. And the haze is still around. It's been a good five minutes. I know this isn't the red gel, but I just wanted to show you, this is at the lowest Kelvin on my camera, which is 2,500 Kelvin. And this has actually got the CTO gel on it. It's blue. <laughs> obviously this is cutting some of the some of the light out, so it obviously looks brighter without it. This is no CTO. It's set to 2,500 Kelvin. And again, just different kind of different colour scene, just by experimenting with your Kelvin. Right, so this is with the red gel, and the red gel does cut a lot of light out. So I'm actually going to increase the brightness. This is what it looks like. Red again. Experiment with it. You could also just change the colours in post, but it will not look as good as in camera. Let's haze this bitch up. This is what it looks like. Awesome. So this is how to this is how I created the shot. And I actually used the Canon 5D Mark IV for that, where it's got way less capabilities than the Black Magic. So this is the third shot that I created, but first let's see how we got here. So this was the first composition that I had, which I wasn't that pleased with because it was very flat and not very dynamic. So I added some haze to it, which obviously lowers the contrast, but I couldn't understand why I was getting so much more light on the shot. And it's actually because I had this door left open by accident and there's a white wall here where the sun was hitting, letting all of that light spill into the shed. So this is with the door open and this is with it closed. So you can see how much of a difference it actually makes to the shot. So here's with it open and then here is with it closed. As it lo looks a lot more cinematic. Um, but I still wasn't that happy with the shot. As you can see, I'm struggling here because I couldn't be bothered to get a chair and just kept squatting for ages and burning my legs out. So I changed the composition up and shot into the corner of the shed, which was quite hard because there wasn't much room to move my camera around. But I managed to get it done, and so I'm using the, the windows and the back wall just to create that leading line into my face. So this shot in particular was lit up with the 220D set to 80% with the hyper reflector. And that was just blasting straight through the window, straight into my face, and acting as like the key light also the sunlight but there was too much darkness on the background so I added the 120d to 100% with the hyper reflector and that was just spilling all onto the background so here you'll see this is without the 120d so a lot of darkness in the background and here it is with the 120d as you can see it just creates more visual interest in the background and makes it look like the sun is actually shining through the window the only thing I've changed with this shot is that I'd like to add a bit of a, a bounce or a, a Pavo LED tube shining on the back of my head. As you can see, it's my, the back of my head still falls into darkness, so I'd like to just brighten that bit up, a bit of a kicker, just to separate me from the background. But that's shot three, so now onto shot four. So this is the fourth shot that I created. This was shot at blue hour, but I've colour graded it so that this guy's got a bit of a purple colour to it, just because it looks pretty cool. So I shot this with the small rig 120D as the key light with the soft box, 
with an internal and external diffusion and then the kicker light was the 220D with an urban vapor gel. So this is what the shot looked like without the 220D as a kicker. Um, it was actually a bit brighter in the day here so the 120D was struggling a bit to uh, combat against the brightness of the sky but it didn't do too bad. And then this is the shot with the kicker light on the back. So the Urban Vapor Gel is basically a street light colour. So you know the old fashioned orange street lights. It's the same colour as that. And I'll do a bit more of an in-depth video on the gels that I recently brought. Because if you look in the previous shot, I was just using some cheap gels. So I've actually brought some proper uh, Roscoe coloured ones that are proper, proper gels. They are quite expensive, but they're definitely worth it. And I also, as you can see here, I've brought like a 3D printed mount with magnets in it. So there's nothing else in the market like this. And I'll leave a link in the description to where I got these from. But they are really good. The only issue I had was when a bit of wind picked up outside, they kept falling off. So I had to do the old fashioned way and clip some pegs on. But other than that, they are really good. So this was the fourth shot. So this is the fifth shot that I created. I wanted to create like a street light effect against this wall and this bench. Um, I couldn't actually get the light stand out of the shot because it's quite a wide shot. So I had to kind of blast it against the wall rather than having it point straight down. But it still doesn't look too bad I think. So I created this using the 220D as the key light. This was set to around about 80% and it had the urban vapor gel clipped to it. And then I used the small rig 120D with the soft box with internal and external diffusion. And I also clipped a, I believe it's pronounced Azure Blue gel to it. Um, I'll do a separate video on these gels because they are proper Roscoe ones that I've recently brought. And they are definitely worth getting, but they are expensive, like anything else really in the film industry. But uh, to basically get this to work, um, I had to put these little magnetic pieces inside of the softbox with a bit of Velcro. Uh, the magnetic pieces actually came with my Pavo tubes. I only had three. I did think I've done with four, but three was just enough to hold it in. I've also got these new little um, plastic 3D printed mounts that actually have got magnets in them that stick to the magnets I've put here. So as you can see, I just put the gel over there and then that goes over the top and holds it in nicely but I'll do a separate video about these gels and these uh, little plastic 3D printed mounts um, so that's how I basically got the colour blue in the softbox so this is what the shot looks like um, with fully lit and then this is what it looks like without the blue fill and then here is what it looks like with no key light at all just the blue fill on its own and here it is again with all the lights that work together so they all do work in harmony with one another um, I think it definitely looks a lot better with the blue fill light if it didn't have a fill light there it would look a bit empty and dark so it kind of just fills in any sort of shadows a little bit and has a bit of blue tint like a moonlight effect so yeah this is how I shot the fifth one